For the past probably year, I haven't worried about returns on Amazon FBA. Actually, it's better than that. I don't even think I've thought about returns on Amazon FBA, except for when I'm making videos that explain my profit and loss and that line item shows up. Otherwise, I don't think about it at all. So in today's video, I want to talk about why that's the case and how that can be the case and essentially just show you why I don't care really about Amazon FBA returns and my mindset about that, as well as what I do with like emails and other things that you actually have to do on Amazon in order to maintain a good account. When I first started and if you're just starting on Amazon, returns can be a really scary prospect just because if you spend $500 on inventory and that's all the money that you have to start a business, like pretty much was for me, and then you start to get things returned and then that money gets taken out of your Amazon account, it can be a little bit frightening because you want to get that money back so that you can pay yourself back and as well as buy new inventory and continue to build your business. And honestly, talking about that reminds me that I should probably share exactly how the Amazon return system works in terms of your money before we even get to why I don't care about it anymore. So this is the process of customers buying products from Amazon and potentially returning them. What happens is initially the customer will purchase the item. We'll just say it's a $30 pair of shorts. So the customer gives Amazon $30 and then they'll eventually receive the item from an Amazon delivery driver in a van that looks eerily similar to mine. And then Amazon will pay you essentially they'll release the money as funds available minus the fees. So about $20 is what we're gonna say for the sake of this example, will go to you who is obviously super cool. So what happens to the money during that process? Initially, the $30 goes to Amazon at checkout, $30 minus the fees, we'll just say they're $10, making it $20 deposited into your account balance, which is not available yet. This is going to be reserve or secret reserve. That's a concept that I've talked about in a separate video that I'll link at the end of this one if you wanna check it out. And then what happens is after the customer receives the item, there's a seven day reserve clock that begins on the expected customer delivery date. So seven day reserve isn't from when they buy the item, it's from when they're expected to receive the item. So the funds are still held in your account balance as a reserve. After the seven days are up, those funds become available balance and will be paid out on the next pay date or upon request, which you're able to do up to every 24 hours. The question then becomes, what if the customer returns the item? Essentially, Amazon likely takes $30 from your account balance. That is not just your account balance, but your available account balance. So if you're expecting a higher payout than what you got, it might be that someone just requested a return right before Amazon began to pay you out because they'll take that from your available account balance so that they can hold on to those funds until the product gets back to them. And your account balance can go negative and you may have to come out of your bank account, especially at the beginning, but I've never had that issue and not many people, if anybody that I know has had that issue. After this, Amazon will reimburse you for some fees, not all fees. I'll show on the screen what Amazon says on their website. Site. They credit your account for all or part of the selling on Amazon referral fee and where applicable closing fee for a return item. They don't reimburse for applicable fees which are probably like pick and pack fees. And sometimes there can be a restocking fee that the customer may have to pay, which will go to you. And then they're going to wait on the item after they receive the item, which can be up to 30 days from when the customer buys it or receives the item. Sometimes they even accept after that date, but they see if the product is sellable or not. If it is sellable, they'll just put it back in your inventory. You don't have anything to worry about. You'll be out some of the Amazon fees, but you'll be able to sell that product again, which is one of the reasons why returns aren't as scary as they could be. But if your product is apparel and some jewelry, they will charge you a fee for a return. So if you sell a lot of apparel, you might see return fee on your profit and loss statement. And that's one of the reasons why people don't like selling apparel as much sometimes. Obviously, there's a lot of profit to be made, and I have made a decent amount of profit in apparel, and I'll continue selling it, even though the return rates are higher and you have to pay return fees. Probably change the color of that light to be better. Okay. Some people might not agree with that whole process, but if you're going to sell on Amazon, especially FBA, you have to agree with the rules. This is not FBM returns. I've never done FBM and I don't plan on doing FBM ever. Now that we understand how returns work, I think it's important that we discuss why I don't really care about them at this point anymore. The first reason is that anytime that you have an inventory based business, you're going to deal with returns. It's just a part of the reality of it. And if you do any sort of volume, you might notice the returns if you really focus on them. However, it just becomes another line item in your profit and loss statement that you don't really have to worry about too much, even if the item comes back from the customer and it's not sellable again, and maybe you try to sell again on eBay or something. To be completely honest with you, I was worrying so much about returns when I first started selling on Amazon, and then when I implemented some of the things that we're gonna talk about, even though my return amounts didn't change, and they've actually gone up since then, I've cared about them a lot less and still managed to survive really well on Amazon. The first recommendation that I would have for you in dealing with returns is to start selling enough volume that you don't really have to think about them. On average, if I'm not selling apparel, my return rates tend to be anywhere from two to 5%. If I am selling apparel, it can get up to 10%, especially if that's all that I'm selling. But even at those rates, I'm selling enough that I never really have to worry about my account going negative and I'm still making money from it and still profiting from it all, as you can see from my income statements, even though it's been pretty low these last couple months as I haven't been sending a lot in. In the very beginning, you might want to watch your returns, but it's not really something 
something that you can control. Definitely make sure that you're buying items that are quality items and that you're sending them in packaging that isn't really beat up because you don't want to sell anything that's used or have people think something is used and then have them just return it. So as long as you're doing everything on your end to make sure that you're sending in quality controlled products, there's not really a lot that you can do in the realm of returns. So once you realize that, I know it's a lot easier said than done because Amazon, every time someone returns an item or initiates a return request, they send you an email. And so I want to share with you how I don't even worry about those anymore. If we go over to Gmail, this is something that I do with all of my Amazon emails, not just my returns. But if we look over here on this left side, we can see I have reselling and then Amazon labels and I have everything automatically sent into these labels. I have Amazon refunds at the top, FBA shipments, pricing errors, removal request, and shipped items. These are all emails that you probably get from Amazon that are probably filling up your inbox. And what I do is instead of just letting them sit in my inbox or forcing myself to go through and read every single one of them, especially these return ones here, so you can see I yeah, refund initiated. I hate getting those emails. All these refund initiated things can really be demoralizing and help to set you back on Amazon instead of helping you go forward. So what I do with these emails is super simple. If you click into one of these emails right here and you go into this more tab, I think this just works for Gmail. It might work for other programs as well. I'm sure that they have a way to do this. You can go down here to filter messages like these. So I click on filter messages like these and it says from do not reply at amazon.com. And after you do this, I'll show you the settings that I put in personally by going up here into settings, see all settings, and then over here into filters and blocked addresses. This is how I filter all of my Amazon stuff as well as everything else. So I don't have to look at anything in my inbox unless it's either a new email, something from one of you guys or something important. And I know where all my emails are. So filtered and blocked addresses. Oh man, I have a lot of these filters as you can see. And as you can see right here, it says matches Amazon has shipped. So every time in this subject, it says Amazon has shipped. I have the filter do this. It skips my inbox, so I never see it. I mark it as red because I don't really need to see everything that Amazon ships. And then I apply the label reselling Amazon shipped items. So right down here, every single time Amazon ships something, you get an email. As you can see, I have 18 emails from today, 93 from all these. So I have a ton and ton of emails. So when it says Amazon is shipped, it automatically archives it into this label as well as reads it so I don't have something like I do down here in Scott IQ where it says I have one email that I need to go read and so right here we can see that one of my very first ones that I did was refund initiated for order so when that comes in I have it skip my inbox mark that email as red so I never have to read it unless I want to go back through and look at it because it might be important for me to have this information but I don't need to read it every time it happens and then apply that label Amazon refunds down there. So going up here to filter messages like those the way that you do that pretty simply is just has the words Amazon refund something like I don't remember exactly what it was then create filter down here and then I would skip the inbox mark it as red you could start if you want you can apply it to a specific label you can forward it you can delete it if you don't want to see them at all you have all these options I'm sure you can see on other emails as well if you don't use Gmail but with that one trick I saved so much worry in my mind and just about refunds in general because I knew it wasn't anything that I can control, but I was still worrying about it because I was seeing it. And so taking that away from my eyesight by putting it into a different label that I never look at. And that's the first time I've opened that probably in about six, eight, 10, 12 months. I don't even know. It's been so long because I don't look at my refunds anymore. That doesn't mean I'm not aware of them because every time that I make an income video, I do talk about my refunds because it's important to realize trends with them. This last month, I sold a lot of apparel and my refunds were 10%, but normally it's only around 3% and you can also see the expenses that were refunded back and as long as I'm in a range where it's pretty comfortable I don't have to really go back through and see why my items were refunded so I still don't look at that email but I have it there in case I want to go back but there are some things that you'll still need to do with refunds if you don't want to worry about them at all and a major one with that has to do with unfulfillable inventory. When Amazon gets your item back after the customer has returned it, they'll determine whether it's sellable and just put it in your inventory or if the customer damaged it or if it's just damaged in general. If the customer damaged it, they'll probably reimburse you. And you can double check that because I get emails for FBA reimbursements as well. And I used to check all the time if Amazon was reimbursing me correctly. However, I didn't find any flaws with them and they might be there, but it's not worth my time to go back through to find maybe five or $10. But if you go to inventory, manage inventory here, up at the top, you'll see remove unfulfillable inventory this is where your inventory will go after Amazon deems that they can't sell anymore I've had up to like 20 or 30 items in here before I honestly never look at this page anymore anyways because if you go up here to this upper right you have auto removal setting I used to have it set up that if something was unfulfillable I would have Amazon return it back to me sometimes it took a very long time like over a year for one item normally it's pretty fast but then I would try to sell it on eBay or somewhere locally so that I didn't have to have it just sitting in my house and eventually I ended up donating a lot of stuff because it didn't sell but now that I'm living in the van I don't want to overwhelm the person who's doing all of our mail stuff so I just have it go to either refurbishment liquidations or dispose and I do that weekly on the 8th 15th 22nd 29th and then they email me about that 
and that's another thing that I just mark as read automatically and have it sent to a label. But if you'd rather have it returned to you or not have it go through liquidations and just have everything automatically returned to you or change this to immediately, twice a month or once a month, you're able to do that. You just need to make sure that your inventory is out of unfulfillable within 30 days. There's one last thing about refunds that I want to talk to you guys about because it's something that I used to check all the time. And that is the fact that a customer can initiate a refund request and then not send an item back. Normally, this hasn't been an issue and I've checked this over and over again and haven't had an issue personally with it, but I've heard people say that they have had issues because if a customer doesn't send their item back by the time that it's supposed to be returned, Amazon will reimburse you for that refund. Honestly, if this is the case, I'm not sure if they give you back 100% of your fees. I think that that'd be the right thing for them to do, but I can't give them the benefit of the doubt on that. And I used to check this all the time. I would go through every single refund that I had initiated on Amazon, and then I would go through to make sure that either if the item was back in my inventory and it was returned to me, or if it was unfulfillable, or if the customer never returned it, that I got it reimbursed. And there is a way that you can do that just on seller help really fast that automatically will tell you what's happened with that refund order. But I never had any issues with it, so I've stopped doing that now. And like I said, I might be leaving a little bit of money on the table, but it's not really worth my time for something that hasn't proven to be profitable before. But something for you to know in case you want to test it out. So essentially, I don't really care about returns and I don't really deal with them actively. I passively do for sure, but it hasn't been something where it's been a big enough issue to worry about in my business. And as long as I'm monitoring that every single month, it's enough active work for me to see whether or not I'm doing a good job with sending in the correct inventory with the correct quality control. If you want to check out that video about reserves and kind of the secret reserve balance, go check it out over here. If you want to see some of the breakdowns of my income where I talk about some of these refunds and other things, watch that playlist down here. It has all of them from the previous months. These last couple of months have not been pretty, but before then, pretty good. See you there.